This is actually my favorite room. I don't know if I should take you in here because it's a mess. And I have albums of the years through here. These are photos that are a diary. This is a picture of me on a photo shoot here, and it's almost like I'm kind of walking away, so it's kind of a, like a double meaning there. And it just says so many memories, so many milestones, so many mills, so many miles, so many meetings, so many smiles. They uh, kind of had me in the beginning, back when I still had hair and stuff, but uh, the family when our girls were little. So from 82 to 87, within five years, um, you can really see the difference starting to already develop and change. To be able to look back and say I'm really proud of what we did back then and then to watch what's happened since. Um, Wood Miser is one of those worldwide names now it's very well respected. I'm glad I got to play a small role, but it was a case of never give up. We had a great product and we persevered and now here we are 40 years later. Well, I'm one of the original Laskowskis. Went to work for Woodmiser in August of 1979, which is three years before the sawmills came out. I worked there for most of 35, 40 years. Just to slide down. Oh, to bend. Oh, proszę bardzo. To jest początek czerwca, czerwiec 90 rok. U Krystiana na podwórku. I know. The Laskowski family and Tukovies never dreamed, you know, that this sawmill and built in Indiana, you know, would be a, a worldwide phenomenon. It was another amazing thing that we couldn't have planned in a million years. We all grew together. Everybody that came along came along at the right time. It's just been very enriching for us yes, in, definitely. in so many ways. So do it again. When can we start? <laughs> yes. And just an amazing yeah. experience. Yeah. To explain how I was involved and our family's involved with Woodmiser, I have to go back a little farther to explain that it really started with a dupla carver. Um, my dad designed a carving machine to make a picture frame for my mom. Mom thought it was a good enough idea that she called Popular Mechanics. Popular Mechanics said, oh, send us one, our labs will test it. Hey, that's kind of a cool thing. You would have a block of wood. You would bolt that down to this table they gave us our one page and... Um, and so the article came out. And then over here, you would, you would bolt down your, your figurine or whatever it is you're wanting to, to copy. And we were at the house with no manufacturing uh, abilities. Mailbox would start filling up with... With checks in it. You have a router over here that would follow and it would just carve out that figurine or image. So we ended up um, having to go into business because we had people's money. It was a good idea. We would like to introduce you to the Unitech ULC-34 personnel carrier and crane manufactured by Unitech Products Corporation. The Unitech As we developed that market for the Duple Carver and just got bigger and we decided we wanted to go on to other products, 
Somewhere along the way, Dan DeCalvey decided we were going to break into the, the um, personal lift industry. Look at the Unitech, because one man can do the work of two. Took off pretty good, but it was not the kind of market we wanted to work with. They sold it. They took that money and funded the sawmill. Neither one of them knowing anything about sawmills. So I believe it was divine intervention to this day that they decided to do that. I don't think Don and Dan ever dreamed it would be much more than a little shop here and a little shop there. And just so happened, it just grew way bigger than they ever dreamed it would. And so I think that's just the blessing that, you know, comes from doing the right thing first. And when Dan started, it was basically with his brothers. And then as we grew, it was, hey, do you have any friends? Um, you know, what are they gonna do after school? Well, I know this person. A lot of us are from right here is where it kind of started. It's where our, our very beginnings were. None of us would have imagined it. I mean, this started in a little house in a two-car garage in a basement in Dan Colby's. It's beyond what any of us could imagine. Uh, I get asked the question a lot about Wood Miser and its history and where we are today. Woodmiser has been successful, I think, for a lot of reasons. Number one is I think the foundation was there. You can't have a good place without a good foundation. They built a culture in the company that was second to none. Dad always talked about running a company uh, with Christian values in a corporate environment. 1987. We would like to introduce you to a new generation sawmill, a mill that can be operated easily by one man. This new generation sawmill is Woodmiser Lumber Mill. Dan built the first sawmill, ended up not having a log. You know, I said, I've got a log. Drove the sawmill up next to it, loaded it onto the bed. We looked down the, the board and it was as flat as could be and we thought, whoa, you know, this thing actually cuts wood. It was one of those crazy ideas because they had no experience in making a sawmill. They had no experience in using a sawmill. This was a whole brand new world to them. And their idea was to make a band mill using a thin curved band, which many people had tried and they had all failed. They got their heads together and scratched it out on a piece of paper and they talked about it. And then Don said to Dan, see what you can do. And Dan took that home. And the next thing you know, he had a machine built. He just made it come to life. Because you couldn't get lumber from the sawmills, Dan decided, Don, they looked at it and said, we'll just make our own. We all kind of laughed. Three months later, we had our first one. Can you give me a smile? Sure. Thank you. That first advertisement went out. All of a sudden, about the middle of 1982, a man by the name of Joe Bistrovich called and placed his order, sight unseen. Don personally delivered the sawmill and trained Mr. Bistrovich. So you talk about a guy taking a chance with a young company that had no proven track record. 
The thought that you could follow the dream of sawmilling, running your own business, being independent, taking care of your own machine. You didn't really need anybody else um, to be able to go and, and make a living. And I think that was extraordinary and very attractive to a lot of people as we know. We're at our show in Ligna and that is the sign that's on the side of our, the mobile home. The option of being able to go out and buy a sawmill and actually cut lumber for a project or something you wanted to do didn't exist. I never forget, we would go to shows and there would be all these old timers with their arms crossed and this, this look on their face like, there's no way that saw can cut that log. And we'd start that mill up and we'd make that cut and that little bandsaw blade would go through there and we'd get done, we'd shut it off and those guys would come up there and look at it and feel that and they still just would shake their head and they just couldn't figure out how it did it. That was fun to be able to go to those things and watch people just stand around as we're peeling off little pieces of wood. And being new, it was, it was a lot of fun to have people watch. It's really generated a ton of interest for people to dream and think, wow, I could do that. big thing that Don was a big believer is to, to grow, you need to be an international company. I can remember the first time we got an international call and somebody had called in and asked about a sawmill and it was like, everybody got kind of got giggly and quiet, you know, like they're calling from England. Well, you can blame Jerzy Haduchik. We called him Jersey. <laughs> we had this um, persistent person come in the front door one day. Hiduchik was living in America at the time. He was up in uh, the New England area. And Hiduchik had come to father to say, I've seen your machine, your mill, and it is exactly what we need. And at the time we were making the two a week, two a week. Some days, you know, we get all excited. We got four machines. In the first year, he sold almost a hundred mills. I think it was then that we realized that we had something far bigger than we would have even imagined. Myślałem, że to jest tak oczywiste, żeby szkieletowe budownictwo wprowadzić do Polski, bo ono jest łatwe, proste, ludzie mogą dużo sami zrobić. Przyjeżdżałem do Polski z wykładami na te tematy, aż w 1989 roku na wiosnę jeden z gości powiedział mi, chłopie, gdzie ty się pchasz, przecież te nasze tartaki jak wyglądają. W druga połowa grudnia wracałem z jakiejś tam budowy swojej do domu i był wypadek. A to jest miejscowość około 50 mil od Nowego Jorku. Jadąc objazdem zobaczyłem, jak Woodmeister stał na jakimś podwórku i ciął kłody. I odpisałem sobie numer i zadzwoniłem do Indianapolis. Zasiało to w jego, w jego głowie pewną wizję przedsięwzięcia w Polsce, ponieważ zawsze z tego, co słyszałem, Jerzy powtarzał, jego serce było w Polsce. On marzył o tym, żeby wrócić do Polski i zrobić coś w Polsce właśnie około biznesowego. Z racji na, na to, że dość długo pracuję w tej firmie, to pamiętam początki. Sam moment przyjęcia utkwił mi w głowie, ponieważ ja byłem dosłownie kilka dni po, po ślubie. Dostałem telefon od mojego kolegi szkolnego, że ok, wiesz, tu powstaje taka firma, chodź, pojedziemy, zobaczymy, co tam słychać. No też wsiedliśmy na rowery. 
Pojechaliśmy na ulicę na Górną do siedziby SKR-u. Przywitał nas bardzo dynamiczny człowiek, który zadał pytanie, czego wy tutaj szukacie? No, słyszeliśmy, że tutaj będzie praca. Proszę przyjść jutro na ósmą, jesteście przyjęci. Pracę w Woodmeiserze rozpoczynałem w 1990 roku, a więc zaraz po oficjalnym zarejestrowaniu firmy, bo jak dobrze pamiętam, pierwszy wpis do rejestru handlowego, tak to się wtedy nazywało, miał miejsce 31 lipca 1990 roku. Później dostałem od Krystiana Lendli, który był pierwszym dyrektorem, jego księgowość, czyli jakiś zeszyt w kratkę z zapisami, kto wpłacił pieniądze, kto kupił maszyny i to tak, tak się zaczynało. Do pracy mnie przyjmował pan prezes Jerzy Hajduczyk w roku 93. Stąd zapamiętałem go jako osobę pierwszą, którą tak naprawdę poznałem w firmie. Nauczyłem się sporo od pana Jerzego Hajduczyka, a przede wszystkim podejmowania szybkich decyzji. I pan Jerzy Hajduczyk tutaj dużo wniósł takich właśnie świeżości z rynku zachodniego, z rynku, z rynku zachodniego i amerykańskiego. I was in on the, the first two or three years at, at Wood Miser in, in Poland, in Kowal, Poland which uh, today is, uh, is a similar headquarters in Europe to the headquarters in the U.S. I remember the little town of Cole there, the first time I was there. You know, it's just tremendous change that's happened in, in, in Poland. I never forget my first trip over there when uh, Jerzy showed us around and, and uh, it was really interesting. You know, what could be better? The center of Poland, very close to the center of the enlarged Europe and certainly the sawmilling part of Europe. So, uh, a very good decision. I think the original reason it came to Poland, uh, Koło particularly, was A, the Polish heritage of the Laskowski family, um, but also Jerzy Hadducik. Okay, this is Monday morning. Uh and uh, the fellows are just getting ready to go out and do some custom cutting. These are the two head mechanics right here, and, that, and they do most of the assembly and alignment. Zadzwonił do mnie Don Laskowski, który dowiedział się gdzieś tam, gdzieś tam, że jakiś facet przyjechał tutaj i mówi, że chciałby budować domy w Polsce i Woodmeiser to jest it. I on mówi, wiesz co? I think we should do something together. Ja zakładałem, że będzie z tego coś dużego. Pożyczyłem malucha. Wsadziłem Dona do malucha i w Polskę ruszyliśmy. I założyliśmy firmę pod nazwą Woodmeister Poland. No myśmy nie mieli nic. I pierwszy trakt był złożony pod lampą na ulicy. Całą noc żeśmy składali. This is when the first uh, sawmills, portable sawmills, were assembled in April of 1990 on Polish territory. This corner was our first office. This was one, this was, a, 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 there was a little desk here. And a little table here in the corner, we had a computer, we had a typewriter here, and we had a telephone. There's Danuta, she's, she's hard at work on a Saturday. Too hard. <laughs> Too hard at work. <laughs> Firma Woodmeiser mocno się rozwinęła. Wtedy sprzedawaliśmy kilkaset maszyn. Dzisiaj widzimy firmę w zupełnie innym miejscu.
having the European presence was the acknowledgement that we had to develop and allow our customers to be successful in many different environments. Asia, Africa, very cold climates, very hot climates. We're working with customers throughout the world and our customers in each different part of the world benefit from things we learn in other parts of the world. I think that influx of experience and necessity was very important to the growth of Woodmiser globally. When Dan and Don got together and thought about that first sawmill, they, they were thinking, yeah, we could grow this company and continue to grow it. But I don't know that they were thinking, we're going to have employees on six continents taking care of customers with our Woodmiser sawmills. We do have some founding principles that continue today to, um, to really to try to make the world a better place. And that was a, a very strong principle that, um, that Don and Dan, um, our founders, that they built the company on. Don was born and raised on a farm in North Dakota. And uh, he did not have running water or electricity until he was about 18. And Dan DeCalvey was uh, another of our miracles. Don and Dan were amazing guys. Both their goals were the same. It just seemed like it was just a partnership that was meant to be. No one gave us a chance in the world. We surprised everybody, including ourselves. So. We were in love, and that makes a big difference. Dan and Don and the, and the early employees just took this product that was really revolutionary, and here we are 40 years later, and we're, and we're still doing it. We are the beneficiaries of 40 years of hard work that came before us. Woodmiser is much more than a sawmill, and we've seen that over the years as our customers have grown with us. It really is a lifestyle. Uh, I, I lived it myself when I pulled my LT28 out into the woods and cut a log. That feeling of accomplishment that we had by cutting a log into lumber. We say this all the time, we're changing people's lives. Mm -hmm.